Fargo Season 5 has concluded, and boy, what an ending! If you grew up loving the 1996 Coen Brothers movie, then you know that a high body count is comedically placed alongside a heartfelt drama about ordinary nice people of Midwest America. Just watch this scene. Oh, jeez. So... Oh, jeez. Here's the second one! It's in the head and the hand there. I guess that's a defensive wound. Oh, yeah? Where's the state trooper? Back there, a good piece in the ditch next to his prowler. OK. So we got a trooper pull someone over. We got a shooting. These folks drive by. There's a high-speed pursuit. Ends here, and then this execution-type deal. Yeah. I'd be very surprised if our suspect was from Brainerd. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, from his footprint, he looks like a big fella. You see something down there, Chief? No, I just think I'm gonna barf. Jeez. You okay, Margie? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just morning sickness. Well, that passed. Out of that, Noah Hawley brought us the anthology series set in the same universe, which is set in different eras from the 1950s up to the present day. Each one has the unique mix of black comedy and gritty drama. A star-studded cast of actors have also played the title roles. There have been some excellent series, my favourites being seasons one and two. The Ponderous season four was my least favourite, although it did have its moments. The latest one I think tops the other two. And it is this one I want to focus on. Starring Jennifer Jason Lee, Juno Temple, Joe Keery and John Hamm, it is set in 2019. Therefore, a lot of the storylines and context are as warm and fresh as the blood in a cold Midwestern winter. Notably, John Hamm plays a towering, hulky, right-wing, maniacal county sheriff, Roy Tillman, who attempts to kidnap back his ex-wife, Nadine, played by Temple, who is now under our new name, Dot, and is now happily married with one child. He sends the weird mulch, an accomplice, to do the deed. But it goes horribly wrong, and after a shootout, she escapes back. Soon the police, FBI, Tillman's militia, and Dot's rich mother-in-law, Lorraine Lyon, played by Jennifer Jason Lee, are on her case. Her past has come back to haunt her. Moreover, Tillman is seeking re-election, and will do anything not to lose. What could possibly go wrong? I truly believe it is the most satisfying conclusion to a TV series I've seen in a long time. First, the prison. In true Coen Brothers style, money, debt and ransom are at the heart of the plot. Lorraine Lyon runs a debt collecting agency. Indira Olmsted, a cop who is heavily indebted, later becomes her security chief in order to wipe out the debt. She and Lyon attend the imprisoned Tillman. I love that colour on you. Hey. You know what I'd love to see on you? A noose. Hey, watch your mouth, convict. She wouldn't last five minutes in here, that one. Too many principles. But you... You'd be queen... I saw you filed for an appeal. That was a mistake. Please. That whole thing was rigged. Your so-called trial. You should know. I'm the single largest donor to the Federalist Society. Oh, yeah? What do they do? Something with books? They control the courts. Selecting judges all the way up to the Supreme Court. He threatens him with prisoners who are in their pocket after she cleared their debts. Where was I? Oh, yes. Punishment. Did you know that 85% of all prisoners are in debt? 
hundreds if not thousands of dollars interest accruing, their families put out on the street. Well, I've started a fund to help certain prisoners free themselves from this burden, the private fund, plus a little fresh cash each month in their commissary accounts, Vaseline, Vienna sausages, that kind of thing. Which prisoners? Um, that one, I think. And him over there with the scars. Oh, and all of the men on cell block D and B and A. Well, that's mighty Christian of you. Oh no, this has nothing to do with that book. It's an older text, written on stone tablets in the age of the skull fuckers. Did Nadine put you up to this? Please. She's a Girl Scout. I fight my own battles and you need to pay for what you've taken. So you want me dead? No. I want you alive for a very, very long time. But while you live, I want you to feel everything your wives felt. Every blow, each humiliation, fear. I'm not afraid of you. It's not me you need to be afraid of. These might come in handy. Graceless and ruthless right until the end. Money is muscle. In the final scene, the Lion family are finally enjoying some time together. They're preparing a meal when the mysterious mulch, Dot's kidnapper, reappears with clear intent to repay the debt owed. An eye for an eye, if you will. Will you take these over to Dad, huh? Yeah. Thank you. We will finish our engagement now. I thought we were done. You said... The debt must be paid. A man's flesh was taken. Now a pound is required in return. There you go. A man is grateful. So you from uh, you from around here? Across the sea. But here a long time. From the age of the carrier pigeon and the 600 tribes. The Arapaho, the Cree and the Tonkawa. A man comes never having seen a mountain. He cannot remember the year of his birth. He is paid to soldier. But one night, he wanders from his post, drawn by the songs of the river. Well, Scotty's grandfather took us to the Vermilion last year. My, uh, my dad, Wink, well, he's a big fly fisherman. Remember that, hon? I caught a cold. Yeah. <laughs> no, she did. It's kind of funny. 
Now, Mulch's origins are a bit of a mystery. We're not really sure whether he's mad, he's bad, or he truly is some immortal being. However, an earlier scene in the series sees him involved in a burial ritual in Tudor, England. He is paid to eat food off a rich dead man's body. To man, for he has sinned in the eyes of the Lord, and for this wickedness he must pay. In forgiveness of your debts to man, will you consume his lordship's sins to God? I will. You may begin. Now to thee, dear man. And for? For thy peace. Upon my old soul. Factum est illud, fieri infectum. Non potest. cannot be undone. The poor beggar and or drifter now carries the man's sins, and has carried the sins since, cursed to wander the earth until he atones for his sins. Mulch has unfinished business. Who can pay for the sins that he now carries? Usually the world of Fargo resets itself, along with the high body count. Often the protagonist comes home like it's just another day at the office. However, this ends differently with a story-changing meal. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive. Through thy bounty, through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, will you uh, pass uh, Mr. Monk's bowl? All right. Oh, thank mm. you. Oh, personally, I've never been across the sea. No. By longboat, we came. Three dozen men pulling at oars. The rain so heavy. Some drowned in their seats. Jeez. First in forest, then on grassland. A man's hair grew long. He rode a horse without saddle or reins, and the people of the plains were his people. But then came the cannon and the musket, and he was alone once more. For a century, he spoke to no one. Hmm. I don't know if I could go an hour without talking. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy does sales. Yeah. <laughs> Daddy likes talking. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You ever drive a Kia, Mr. Munk? It's like flying a cloud. I think we should see how your biscuits turned out, huh? Before the boat, the 
men lived on the moors and ate fleas from the rats. He was frightened all the time. Then one day, a man comes on a wealthy horse and offers him two coins and a meal. But the food was not food. What was it? It was sin. The sins of the rich. Greed, envy, disgust. They were bitter. The sins. But he ate them all for he was starving. From then on, the man does not sleep or grow old. He cannot die. He has no dreams. All that is left is sin. It feels like that. I know. What they do to us. Make us swallow. Like it's our fault. You want to know the cure? You gotta eat something made with love and joy. And be forgiven. revenge he is met with grace. Coming in with hostility, he is shown hospitality. He is served cookies, bread if you will, and wine. Treated not as an enemy, but as a friend. At first it was too wonderful for him to accept, but he is won over and overwhelmed. It made me gobsmacked and left me in total, utter awe. There is a truer and greater answer to the nihilistic strife of Fargo. A higher and greater meal and table. It is the communion table of Jesus Christ. His last meal before his death involved him dishing out bread and wine before friends who had abandoned him later. The bread symbolising his body broken and shared out. The wine symbolising his blood poured out. It is the embodiment of cheek turning love.
Hear it from the words of Jesus. You have heard it said, love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Don't even the pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And Paul and the earliest Christians carried on this teaching. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not pay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, It is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Challenging words there. And the whole story of the Bible is one where the friend will be united with the foe, the lamb will lie down with the lion, and the cobra will lie down with the baby. By the way, not something I want to risk assess if I were at you, but apparently it will work. And it is at this marriage feast where all stripes, colours, nations, tongues and tribes will be lying together. It would astound you, given the kind of years we've been having politically. But that has always been the Bible's vision. God reunites mankind who have so wronged him and are up to their eyeballs eternally so like mulch debt. More so even. More cursed. How does he do that? Well, he does it through his son Jesus Christ who paid the debt and righted the wrong by taking the wrongs for us. Lions can indeed lie with lambs. Everything sad will be made untrue. There'll be no more death, no more mourning, no more crying, no more tears, for Jesus will wipe them all away and we can eat with him in full, joyful feasting. Now I think I'd better get tucked into my own biscuits and wine. Thank you once again for watching my video. Please do give it a like and let me know what you think in the comments and hit the subscribe button so you're ready for the next one where I'll see you there.